Okay, so we're going to have a look at the double angle formula here. And the double angle formula are just based on the addition formula. They look different, but they are really just the same as the addition formula. What the double angle formula allow you to do is to halve the angle within a trig function. So if I had an angle that was 2a, I would be able to express it in this way where the angle has been halved. Similarly, if I have something that looks like this and I want to go backwards, I wouldn't be halving the angle, I would be doubling the angle instead. We'll say where these have come from in just a second, and I'll also give you some memorizing tips for these ones that we have too. So at the bottom it says these are all easily derivable by just setting a to be equal to b in the compound angle formula. So the sine of 2a is just the same as the sine of a plus a, which is sine a cos a plus cos a sine a. Well, they're the same thing as each other, so I've got two lots of sine a cos a. Well, let's have a look at doing it with this other one that we've got here. Let's have a look at doing it with cos of 2a, which we know is the cos of a plus a. That would be cos a cos a minus sine a sine a. This is cos squared a, and this is sine squared a. So there is that first one here that we've achieved. Now to get the next one, I could replace cos squared with 1 minus sine squared. And when I simplify this, I get 1 minus 2 sine squared a. I replace the cos squared with a 1 minus 2 sine, with a 1 minus sine squared a. And that gives me this one that I've got down here. If I wanted to come up with this other one, I could have replaced the sine squared here with a 1 minus cos squared a and that would give you the 2 cos squared a minus 1. I'm not going to do that one. I'll let you have a go at that. And then for the tan one, well, we would have the tan of a plus a is equal to the tan of a plus the tan of a divided by 1 minus tan a tan a. So the numerator is 2 tan a, and the denominator is 1 minus tan squared a which is what we've got here. So really, these are just the same as before. Now, the way I remember the, co the cos ones um, is what I've got written in this red box, is that the cos on the right-hand side that I have here and here, I almost think of it as being attracted to the cos on the left-hand side. So they're kind of like, they're like right next to each other here and here. Um, whereas the sign that we have is kind of like pushed away from the cos 2a. You really are going to need to memorize these things that we've got, because we're going to be using them lots and lots and lots, OK? We're going to start applying these now. So here we want to use the double angle formulae to write each of the following as a single trigonometric ratio. So I'm going to label these 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We need to think which of these do they look most similar to. Well, this one, cos squared 50 minus sine squared 50, looks most similar to number 2. Now notice. When you have this one, the angles that you have here will double if you put them back into a single function. So this will simply be the same as cos 100. It's just the same formula, but kind of flipped around. Part B of the question, we have 2 tan of pi over 6 all over 1 minus tan squared of pi over 6. Now, it's pretty obvious which of these it looks like. It looks like number 5. And again, these angles here will double. So I'm going to double this pi over 6. So that is going to be tan of 2 times pi over 6, which is the tan of pi over 3. And the tan of pi over 3 is just root 3. And then this last one I've got here it doesn't look like any of them. I have 4 sine 70 over sec. 70. So if it doesn't look like anything, I might need to do a bit of work first. If sec 70 is in the denominator, then I'm going to have to pull it up to the numerator. And when it pulls up to the numerator, it becomes its reciprocal function, which is cos 70. Now think to yourself, which does it most look similar to? Well, I think it looks most similar to 1. Apart from instead of it being a 2 outside the front, it's a 4. So I'm going to change that 4 into a 2 times 2 sine 70, cos 70, and now this thing looks just like 
this thing that we've got here. So notice how the angle is going to double. So there's going to be the two remaining. And then this bit here is going to double the angle. So it just becomes the sine of 140. So it simplifies to 2 sine 140 in this case. OK, let's keep going and do a few more. Remember, I labeled them 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So in D, we're not going to be using it in reverse. We're just going to be using it in the straightforward kind of way that we've got here. And we're going to think, what can I replace the cos 2x with? So cos 2x plus 1. Well, I think if I use number 3, the plus 1 and the minus 1 are going to cancel out nicely. So I'm going to replace the cos 2x with rule number 3, which replaces it with cos squared x, 2 cos squared x minus 1. And don't forget, I've got this extra plus 1 at the end, which are going to cancel. So that gives me 2 root 2 cos squared x, which is root 2 multiplied by root of cos squared x, which is just root 2 cos x. The square root of the cos squared x is just root 2 cos x here. So it's a bit weird, that one. It's a little bit different. Now, e. E, think to yourself, which does it look most similar to? 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5? Well, I think it looks most similar to 1, where we've got this sine and cos right next door to each other. So I'm going to start off by rewriting this and taking the cube right outside the brackets so that it appears like this. Now, sine x cos x is nearly this formula that I've got here. But instead of it being 2 sine x cos x, if I just have sine x cos x, I have divided the right-hand side by 2. So I also need to divide this by 2. And the way I'll do that is just by putting a half inside the front. So I've just taken formula number 1, and I've divided both sides by 2 to say that sine x cos x is a half sine 2x. So I can replace this with a half sine 2x, all cubed. Well, the half cubed is an eighth, and the sine 2x cubed is either sine 2x cubed, but we write that as sine cubed 2x. Notice how the, uh, the 2x has stayed the same throughout all of those calculations there. A pretty tricky one for f. So in f, we have 8 cos x sine x cos 2x. Now, there's a few different things going on here. 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. I think this has similarities with number 1, but not the whole thing. I can just kind of see something in here making me think of number 1. So I want there to be a 2 sine x cos x. So if I need to, I can write these in another order, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to break the 8 down into a 4 times 2 cos x sine x. And I'm just going to make it really clear that this cos x, cos of 2x is going to be nothing to do with this first calculation. So this thing that I have here can now be replaced using this identity that we have. So it is going to be 4 sine 2x cos 2x. Now when I look at this, this also looks similar to number 1. So I'm going to use the double angle formula again. I'm going to break that 4 up into a 2 times 2 sine 2x cos 2x. And now I can say that 2 sine 2x cos 2x, the angle, by using this formula from here to here, the angle doubles. So instead of my final bit being with a 2x, it is going to be 2. And then this thing here, this thing here is all replaced with a sine 4x. So notice what's happened. These x values that we had here doubled, and they became this 2x. And then these 2x values that we had here, in fact, let's do it on the next line so it's less confusing. These 2x values that we had here doubled, and it became 4x. OK, so make sure you're keeping track of all of those different things that we have. Now, in G, you need to recognize something special about this. 1 minus 4 sine squared x plus 4 sine to the power of 4x. One of my students was able to recognize that this is 1 minus 2 sine squared x, all squared. 
which is great because that's the same as rule number four. So I can replace this one minus two sine squared x with cos two x. So it is cos two x all squared, which is cos squared two x. So these are pretty challenging, these questions, and you're going to need to take it really slow. You're going to need to have these formula with you until you get really, really familiar with this. I'm just going to do one more video, which you're going to have to, uh, we're going to do some applications of this stuff.